Hi guys and welcome back to day 25 of Inktober. So today I wanted to do one of those item sheets that you see. I absolutely love the look of these. This is by no means an original idea at all, but it was something that I really enjoy doing and I've been wanting to do for a while and I'll probably do more of them because I know that I could definitely design better items for this kind of a thing if I gave myself a little bit more time to think about who they belong to, what their story is, where they're going, and trying to think of more unique things that they could be carrying around. So I think this will be like my first attempt at one of these item sheets. And then I'll probably readdress it in the future because it was really fun. It's a very, very pleasant thing to sit down and do and just draw a bunch of different items together that have a little bit of a story. And I enjoyed thinking about these as they belong to a person who was going to go off on an adventure. So this was just, it was a really enjoyably fun one to do. So I looked up a lot of inspiration for this piece. I looked up illustrations where it's a very similar concept where they would draw different items. And most of the time they're like very fantasy adventure oriented, which is basically what I did today. I also looked up a lot of concepts and ideas of how people like to lay out the items that they're going to take on a trip or for a particular event and then take a snapshot of it. I love those. I think that they just look so cool and they're really interesting and and, and very insightful, I guess, to that person. So I, I always love those and I love being able to look at the design of the things that people have and collect and how you can see a similar eye for detail and design throughout the types of objects that people have when they're when they're going places. I, I just love the idea of people having a very, their own taste, a, a very uh, personalized way of collecting things. Anyways, so I, I just really wanted to draw from, from those and from those ideas and to be able to create a little sheet for myself. I think that there were definitely some things that I could have done better with this. As always, there's always, <laughs> there's always lots of things that I could do better. I think that uh, one of the big things though is that after looking at it as it's finished, I did a lot of like little items that were grouped together. So when I look at it as a full piece from a little bit farther away, some of the areas just get a little bit too hard to decipher and I would have preferred having things look like actual objects. So that's something that I'll keep in mind in the future, do a little bit more of a a range of small medium items so that they're still recognizable as things rather than kind of these vague shapes of really small shapes but that you know that's one thing to learn and one thing to move on from i did have a lot of fun thinking about the different textures that each item would have so that they could have a little bit of a difference in how i executed them I knew that I wanted the sword to be really just roughed up and beat up, which worked really great because it meant that I didn't have to use a ruler and I could just freehand it. And I absolutely love doing straight edges like that where I can really just let it get all gnarly and dented and rough. And I knew that I wanted to continue that over into the ink wash as well. So I had a lot of, I had a lot of fun being able to push the texture in this piece, especially since the subject matter is very simple being able to really push the texture and how things were actually reflecting light it was a great opportunity for me to really push that in this piece and i knew going into this for the background i did not want to do a solid background even if i let it get really textured which is usually what i like to do for this kind of an application i knew that i didn't want to do that for this one because there's so many small objects and edges that i'd have to paint around it would have been incredibly tedious and time consuming to very carefully paint around all those edges. So instead I chose to go with a very textured blotted on kind of a look for the background. So I have this paintbrush that's actually one of my all time favorite watercolor brushes, but it's actually intended for oil paint, but it's very, it's very rough and cloud like, well, the bristles are actually very soft, but it creates a very rough kind of a texture and I absolutely love it. And I focused most of the concentration of the value and the ink wash around the edges of the paper. And then I just blotted it inwards and that way I could really just get in between the items, but I didn't have to very carefully paint around them. And as I got closer to the center of the piece and closer to the items, I let more of the white of the paper peek through. So it was not something that was glaringly obvious. That I didn't fill all that area in. 
And that worked really well actually for this application so that it it filled it in, it made it look intentional. I didn't have to be very precise with it. And it had the look that I wanted where it was really grungy and weathered. And I really, I really enjoyed that. And I, I liked pushing the texture in a different way than I have so far with my other backgrounds with Inktober. And after I was basically done with all the ink washes, it still felt like the items were a little bit disconnected from the background. So I actually just went in with the background again, I created just a slightly darker ink wash and I concentrated it even more around the edges just to really border in the items that helped it ground it out by giving it a darker border that was holding them all together. And it's interesting how when I look at a piece, sometimes it feels like the issue is with one area, but by fixing something else, it fixes that, if that makes sense. So I felt like the items were disconnected and a little bit too too ungrounded, but being able to fix the background a little bit more actually helped with that, that issue that I had. And that is it for today. And I do have very exciting news. I finally launched the Kickstarter for the uh, book of all of my Inktobers put together in a very nicely bound soft cover book. So I am super excited about that. I actually meant to launch that much sooner into the month, but Inktober kind of consumed all of my time. So I am very happy to be able to say that that is officially up. You can go check it out. You can go pledge for it if you'd like to own a copy of the book. And if you don't know what Kickstarter is, basically it just means that this allows me to get everyone gathered together, all the pre-orders, and then everyone will be charged when the campaign ends. So no one will be charged until November 17th. And then I'll be able to order all the books together and send them out to you guys. But Yes, there will be a link in the description. There's also a link to my actual art shop. You can get the original of this one. Also, I have lots of other prints that are very colorful. So if you're getting kind of sick of the gray, I have more pieces down there that have lots of color. And I think that's probably it for today. I will be back tomorrow with another Inktober video. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.